Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today for this IELTS academic writing preparation video. Today, our lesson is going to be all about how to write about more than two pie charts. And this is going to be for writing task one in the academic version of the exam. And this is actually quite a difficult process to get through. A lot of students have questions about how they are supposed to organize and efficiently write with writing prompts that have more than two pie charts. This can include four pie charts, even up to six pie charts like we're going to look at today. So I'm going to show you how to effectively look at all this information, organize it well, and really maximize your time. Because remember, we should be allotting about 20 minutes to questions like this for writing task one. So we'll go through two examples today. I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Now, the first thing we're actually going to look at is our guide. We're going to get right into the examples in just a few minutes. But first off, I just want you to be aware of how you should be approaching these questions. So it's a two-step process, and we'll look at both of these steps in detail. But the first thing you want to do is analyze the charts and plan how to group the information. Now, we're going to group the information into two main groups. I'll talk about this when we look at the outline. But the most important thing is not to get flustered with the amount of information that you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of pie charts, you're going to see a lot of percentages perhaps, and a lot of information. And this is actually more than what you would expect with just two pie charts or just one pie chart, for example. So you're really going to have to do your best to analyze the charts. And it might not be as easy as you think, or it might not be as obvious. So I'm going to show you how to do that in our example. Once we do that and we take our notes and we make a little outline, we are going to approach step two, which is writing an essay using the recommended essay structure. And the essay structure is something that you can use for pretty much any writing task one for the IELTS academic exam. So this is nothing new. We just have to make sure we're being concise and coherent, so I'll take you through that as well. Now before we get into our first example for today, I just want to take you through a guide for our step one. So we do have two general steps, but step one can actually be broken up into two parts, and that is A and B. So like we looked at from the previous slide, we're going to analyze the charts and plan how to group the information. And in order to do this efficiently and effectively, we want to organize the information into two categories. When we're looking at multiple pie charts, it is sometimes confusing and a little bit time consuming to understand how to make these two categories. So I will walk you through that today. And then secondly, we're going to describe the key information from each of the two categories. It's very important that we do not discuss each and every piece of information from all of the pie charts. That is a pitfall and a difficult component of this type of question. So we're only going to be looking at the key information. Okay, let's get started with our first example and we're going to focus on step one. Okay, and here is our first example for today. So I'm going to take you through the language and the writing prompt and then we will get started and we will analyze our charts. So first off it says, the charts below give information on the ages of the populations of Yemen and Italy in 2000 and projections for 2050. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. So this is a very standard writing prompt. And the most important thing, the thing I really wanna call your attention to, is that we will have to make comparisons where relevant. A big problem with this type of question with more than two pie charts is that students usually just discuss every single piece of information in each pie chart without comparing. Remember, we have to write 150 words. When it comes to questions like this, you're probably going to write more than 150. So you want to stay around 200 words if you find yourself writing a lot more than 150. You don't want to go too far over 200. 
A little bit is okay. It depends. It's a case by case situation sometimes. You'll see today we'll probably write around 200 just because there is so much to say, especially when you want to make comparisons. If you find yourself going too far over 200, like 220, that is too much. So, something that you have to practice with this question type is really being concise and understanding what the main features are. So you do not want to write everything and we don't want to write every single piece of information here. So that's really the main thing. Make sure you are comparing and do not get carried away with analyzing the information. So with that being said, we're going to look at this example, really study these charts. And you see we are given four pie charts, two that correspond to Yemen and two that correspond to Italy. It's also important to note that we have two that correspond to the year 2000 and two that correspond to the year 2050. So you might think that you have a choice here. You could either group the information based on Yemen in one category and the information of Italy in the other category, or you could group the information in the year 2000 and then in the year 2050. Now I'm going to show you which one is actually better and I'll explain why. So think about how we can combine the information. It's actually best if you combine the information based on the years. So you want to have one group that is 2000 and one group that is 2050. This is because we're going to describe and compare Italy and Yemen's population data from the year 2000. So these two pie charts on the left, and then we're going to compare Yemen and Italy for the year 2050. So this will allow us to compare data from both Italy and Yemen, while also comparing the data from both years. If we were to group Yemen in one category and Italy in the other, you'd have to spend time comparing 2000 and 2050, and then also comparing Yemen and Italy. And that is just far too much information to include for a 150 word minimum. So I'll take you through it, I'll show you why, but in cases like this, it's usually best to group the years and use those as the significant features rather than the countries. Now right here below, you'll see step one. It is analyze the pie charts and describe key information. So like we just said, our body paragraph one is actually going to be based on data from the year 2000, and our body paragraph two is going to be based on data from 2050. This will allow us to effectively compare Yemen and Italy and compare the years 2000 and 2050, and we're going to do this in a concise manner without writing too much and taking up too much time. So basically what I'm going to do here is take notes in the form of a table, and this will really help you organize your thoughts, and you can also find comparisons to write about in your essay, which is extremely important and something that students forget to do. Also remember, you do not have to use proper grammar or vocabulary here. Feel free to use abbreviations as long as it makes sense to you and it allows you to do it quickly. Examiners are not going to be looking at this note taking part. So I'll just give us some more room here. And basically I'm going to start at 2000. I'm going to start with Yemen. So we're looking at this pie chart on the upper left hand corner. And I'm just going to write a Y to save on space. And right away, I see that just over half, so 50.10% is in the zero to 14 years category. This is very important. It's very specific. And I'm going to write half of population in zero to 14 group. Then I see that senior citizens actually made up less than 5% of this group. It's 3.60. And we don't have to be so specific when talking about numbers here. We could definitely say less than 5% because 5% is a good benchmark. So I'm going to say senior citizens, SC, makes up less than 5%. And then we see the 15 to 59 age group is slightly half of population, okay? Because we see it is 46.30. Now, right away, I'm going to go into Italy. 
Now we're looking at the bottom left-hand corner, this pie chart here, because remember we're looking at 2000. So for Italy, I see quite a change. If we're looking at the blue area, that is zero to 14 years, we have only 14.30%. That's the smallest group here. So I definitely wanna talk about that. And I'm going to say 14% in the zero to 14 group. And here, quite distinctively, the 15 to 59 year old age group is the largest group. So I definitely want to make note of that. So I say the largest group is aged 15 to 59 years old. And then we have again our senior citizens in gray, and that is anyone over 60 years old, we see that the senior citizens made up around a quarter. So we have just about a quarter. A quarter would be 25%. This here is 24.10. So we can say approximately a quarter of the population. So notice that I have said half in a fraction. I'm talking about quarters, but I'm writing one fourth. You really need to be aware of the different ways you can talk about percentages. We'll look at all of the language when I actually write the essay, but just start thinking about this now, and it's also very important as you're studying and preparing for the exam. So that is really all I wanna do when it comes to the year 2000. Now we're going to do the same thing when looking at 2050. Here I'm going to be looking at Yemen on the upper right-hand side. So again, I'm just going to write a Y for consistency, and I'm going to talk about what is relevant in this pie chart. And what I see is that the age group from zero to 14 in blue, that is going to decline. So this is a forecast, so we're going to use the future tense. And I'm going to say here that zero to 14 will decline to 37%. When it comes to our senior citizens over 60 years old, it looks like that will increase about 2%. And then we see the group 15 to 59, that will actually grow. So I am just going to say group 15 to 59 will grow. And that here is sufficient. Now we're going to go back to Italy looking at 2050. That is the lower right-hand pie chart. And we'll look at the differences here. So we're actually going to be comparing 2000 and 2050 as well. So in Italy, it looks like the age group zero to 14 is going to have a 3% drop. So I'll say zero to 14, 3% drop. We also see senior citizens almost doubling. So we have 24.10% and then 42.30%. That's almost double. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. I'm going to say senior citizens will almost double. And then our group 15 to 59, that is also quite interesting. It's going to be reduced by almost two thirds. And so it is a little bit helpful to keep your math in mind just so that you're able to talk about fractions and percentages. So we're going from 61.60 to 46.20. And that is our first step. You just want to pull out your key information and understand which option will allow you to best define and compare as much as possible. In this case, we are looking at the dates because we can compare Yemen and Italy in each paragraph, and we can also effectively compare the data between 2000 and 2050. So we are comparing everything. There is really no chance that we're just going to be writing this information and just defining everything without comparison. That is definitely not an option with this structure. Again, I hope you can see it after this outline. If we were to just have a body paragraph one about Yemen and a body paragraph two about Italy, we would have to describe and compare data from 2000 and 2050 in the paragraph for Yemen. And we would also have to compare Yemen and Italy. Since we have more years than countries, it is a nice clue that the years should be the significant features that you use to group your information. That's always a great idea. Okay, now that we've done step one, I'm going to take you back to review 
the step two overall trend and the outline that we're going to use to write this. And then we'll come back here to write our essay. Now we're going to go back to our guide and we're going to focus on a step that we're going to approach before we actually write the essay. And you can consider this still as part of step one, what you're going to do briefly is summarize the overall trend. And there are two steps here. Basically, when we go back to our writing prompt, we're going to look at those pie charts and we're going to check to see if there is one category that is higher or lower overall. And then if it applies, we can find trends with huge value differences or little differences. And this is going to be important when we compare the years in this case, and also the countries, Italy and Yemen. So keep these two general steps in mind. We always wanna look at something that is a huge value difference or a little value difference, just because that is going to be a specific detail. We don't really wanna to spend too much time on something that is mid-range or not very interesting. Now, with that in mind, we are going to focus on the paragraphs and the outline of our essay. We're going to do this in just a few minutes, and you can think of your outline just like this. We're going to have an introduction, and in the introduction, we're going to paraphrase the task question. So that means basically restating the question using different words and synonyms. Then we're going to have this overview paragraph, which is exactly what we just talked about. We're going to describe the overall trend of the charts. And then quite simply, our last two paragraphs are going to be writing about the first significant feature and then the second significant feature. Now for the outline we just looked at in our first example, that is going to be the year 2000 in the first paragraph and the year 2050 in the second paragraph. This outline is foolproof. I definitely suggest that you use it because you're going to get in all the relevant information while sticking to a great flow and organization. And speaking of that, before we write the essay, I just want to briefly discuss the scoring. So you're going to be scored on four components. The first one is task achievement. This is basically looking at whether or not you have answered the question well. And that is why comparing is so important for questions with multiple pie charts. Again, like I said, most students will just list off key features and they will not compare the relevant data. That is where task achievement comes in. So make sure you are fully answering your question. Second, coherence and cohesion is basically all about the outline that I just showed you. You want to make sure that your essay is flowing logically, that you don't start with body paragraph one and then paraphrase your task question at the end. Don't do that, follow that foolproof outline. I'll show you how to use it in just a bit. And the last two are lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. Here, this is all about the language and the grammar that you use. I will take you through the lexical resource just to make sure that you are using synonyms and advanced level vocabulary and also the grammar. So keep in mind whether or not you have dates in the future or dates in the past. This will impact the grammar that you use. You'll see in our first example, we're going to be using the future. So whenever you can make something a bit more advanced when it comes to your grammar, definitely do that. It will help you with the scoring. All right, so let's go back. I'll look at the overall trend with you and then we will go ahead and start writing our essay. Okay, so we're back and we have, of course, our four pie charts on the left, and I've added this overview overall trend to make some notes. Now, let's just take a look at these pie charts. First off, it is clear that both countries are going to experience changes in terms of the age groups and the trends. This we've already talked about in our notes. And I want you to notice, however, the age group of 60 plus years. Now, that is the gray. Now I want you to notice that, and you'll see that there are increases from 2000 to 2050 in both Yemen and Italy. And that is something that is true in all cases. This is definitely a trend because the percentage is going to become higher overall for the senior citizens. So let's make a note of that. I'm just going to write increase in people over 60, and I'll put both, and that means for both countries. 
And another thing I want to look at is zero to 14 years. Now that is the blue. So you see how in Yemen, it starts at 50.10%, but then it decreases to 37%. And the same thing in Italy, it starts at 14.30 in 2000 and decreases in 2050 to 11.50. So I'm going to say a decrease in people zero to 14 years. And of course, I'll put both. Notice that we are not talking about 15 to 59 year olds in our overview paragraph. That's because in Yemen, it increases, but in Italy, it decreases. This is not an overall trend that is true in all cases. So we're just going to save that for our body paragraphs one and two. Remember, just look at things that are true in both of these cases. They are significant features because they increase and decrease, and that is a perfect overview. Okay, so now we're going to start writing. I have added these headings just for you, just so you can see how I'm spacing out the essay. Of course, when you write your essay, you do not want to include these headings. Now I'm going to write it with you. However, we will examine the language and the grammar, any synonyms at the end, and we'll look at it together. So remember for our introduction, we are just going to paraphrase the task question. So I'm just going to scroll up here and Remember, we see the charts below give information on the ages of the populations of Yemen and Italy in 2000 and projections for 2050. This is what we want to paraphrase. So I'm going to start off and say, the pie charts represent population data based on age in Yemen and Italy in 2000, along with future predictions for 2050. And remember, I have just changed some things. So I've said pie charts instead of just charts. Instead of give information, I've said represent. And then population data based on age is different than the ages of the populations. So I've added the fact that it's data and I've just said based on age instead of on the ages. I've kept, of course, Yemen and Italy in 2000, and I said future predictions instead of projections. So we're done with that. It's short and sweet. You just want to paraphrase and not do anything too out of the ordinary. Now we have our overview paragraph, and we are going to use these notes right here just to make a general statement about trends. So I'm going to say, overall, changes in proportions of age groups are expected in both countries, including an increase in the percentage of people over 60 years old and a decrease in those aged zero to 14 by 2050. And again, that is exactly what we looked at in our notes here. So we're finished with that as well. Remember, you want to keep it short and sweet. Now we're going into body paragraph one. So we wanna talk about this data here. We made notes on it earlier. So I'm just going to start by saying that we're talking about 2000, the year 2000. So I'll say in 2000, those in the zero to 14 years age group constituted roughly half of Yemen's total population Remember, this is what we were talking about here. Now I'm going to directly compare that to Italy. This is very important. So I'm going to say, while only 14% of Italian citizens were included in this category. So we have included relevant information while also comparing Yemen and Italy. Now it's time to look at our senior citizen group. So I'm just following my notes here, and I'm going to say senior citizens made up less than 5% of Yemen's total population in contrast to approximately a quarter of the Italian population. Remember, we looked at that right here. I said one fourth in my notes, and I've chosen to say a quarter in my body paragraph. Again, we'll talk about the language choices after. Now we're going to talk about the last group, and that's citizens aged 15 to 59 years old, represented Italy's largest group at just over 60% or 
whereas this group represented slightly below half of Yemen's inhabitants. So notice how I'm changing up some words, I'm using synonyms, and again, I'm just using the notes that I made earlier when analyzing the pie charts in the beginning. And that is all we have for our body paragraph one. It is simple, to the point, but also makes necessary comparisons. And now for the last paragraph, we're going to focus on 2050. So quite simply, I'm going to say in 2050, it is predicted that the percentage of the population aged below 14 years old will decline to 37% in Yemen. That is exactly what we saw here. Now, again, we want to just compare it to Italy. So I'm going to connect these ideas and say, compared to only a 3% drop in Italy. Now, again, senior citizens, it's like following a formula. While senior citizens are expected to almost double in Italy, they are likely to increase by a mere 2% in Yemen. Although the group of people aged 15 to 59 is expected to grow in Yemen, just like we saw here, I'm going to talk about how it's going to be reduced. So I'm going to say it will be reduced by almost two thirds in Italy. And there you have it. We have followed our notes. It is very organized. We have all of our information that is relevant. We have our comparisons and we are finished with this essay. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit and show you the language and the word count. Now you see I've color coded the synonyms and topic vocabulary in blue, useful vocabulary and phrases in green, and important functional words in red. You'll also see that the total word count is 213 words. That's not bad. It is definitely at our minimum of 150, but it doesn't go extremely overboard. So I would say that this is probably the maximum, 215, 220. You don't wanna go any more over that. But keep in mind, this was quite complicated. We had a lot to talk about and a lot to compare. So this is completely normal. Again, like I said earlier, this question type will usually involve more words. The most important thing is being concise, which we were able to do. Now let's take a look at our synonyms and topic vocabulary in blue. Here I have population data like we talked about before and future predictions instead of projections. Then we have changes in proportions. Proportions is a great word when talking about pie charts and percentages. Total population. Citizens is a great word in this case. We're talking about people in countries. So citizens is great. Senior citizens is an excellent term and it is very applicable in this case for those over 60 years old. And of course, inhabitants is another way to say people who live in a certain area. These are specific to the topic at hand. If you are studying the topics of IELTS, this should be second nature. Always make sure you are studying your synonyms. Now for useful vocabulary and phrases, this is for writing task one in general. Now I want you to note that we used the passive voice here. That is the best route to go when it comes to writing task one usually. So we're looking at are expected, for example. If we look at the last paragraph, we see it is predicted that. So in this case, we don't really know who is predicting the information and it isn't important. So using the passive will really help here. Let's go back to our overview paragraph. We see an increase in, this is great basic terminology, constituted roughly half of, this is another way to say made up. So you don't always want to say that it is, it is constituted and made up. These are great things. Roughly half is an excellent way to say almost half without using approximately or almost too much. Roughly is a great synonym there. We see made up less than, approximately a quarter of, and represented. Then in our last paragraph, like I said earlier, it is predicted. Then we see the active. So it will decline to. Drop is a great way to talk about a decline. Almost double. So notice how I used approximately 
roughly. Here I went ahead and used almost. And then they are likely to increase. This is likely because it's just a projection. It is not a definite future occurrence. And then by a mere, that just shows that it's very small, a minute 2%. So I'm just drawing attention here that it's only 2%. Then we see expected to grow, it will be reduced by almost two thirds. So note how I've used a mix of passive and active, but pretty much the overall grammar point that you want to use for writing task one is most likely going to be the passive. Lastly, let's look at our red, our functional words that really tie everything together. Here, this is quite simple. In our overview paragraph, we have overall. We could also say in general. This is just drawing attention to the overall grand scheme of things. And then to be specific, we say in 2000 and in 2050. Very simple. The thing you should be paying attention to here is the connectives. So we see while, in contrast to, and whereas. These are great ways to compare while saving on word count and also tying into things together without having to make two separate sentences. So I was able to compare in that way. Same thing in our last paragraph, compared to, while, and although. Great ways to show contrasting arguments. All right, great job here. We're going to take things up a notch and move a little bit quicker in our second example. So let's look at that now. And here we are. It says, the charts below show the percentage of water used for different purposes in six areas of the world. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. Now you might be thinking, wow, there are six pie charts here. There's a lot of information, but you basically wanna use the same ideas and the same organization methods that we used in our first example. It is different, but it is not that strange. So again, here we see our six areas of the world. We see industrial use, agricultural use, and domestic use. And the thing that should be jumping out at you is agricultural use. Notice how in these last three bottom areas, it is the absolute highest amount, also for South America. And we also have a nice chunk, a nice percentage of agricultural use in North America and Europe. So I want you to think of this sort of as the lone wolf in that it is the biggest use of the three. And we see domestic use and industrial use as smaller percentages in the bottom three, also smaller for South America, not quite the same for North America and Europe, but in general, a majority of these six areas use domestic use and industrial use less. And so this will give us a clue as to how we should be analyzing the charts and using our significant features. Okay, and I've done that for you right here on the right-hand side. So I've separated industrial and domestic into body paragraph one. I've grouped the two smaller together. And then body paragraph two will talk all about agricultural use. So for body paragraph one, we are simply going to separate industrial and domestic in a very organized manner. So when looking at industrial use, we see that North America and Europe consume approximately 50% of water on average for this reason. I've basically gone ahead and taken the average of 48 and 53. It's more or less 50%. Remember, you want to use this benchmark of 50 and also state that it is on average. That's all we really need to say. Then for domestic use, it is clear that South America uses nearly 20% and it's the highest of all the regions. So we definitely wanna talk about that. And then you can also mention that North America's consumption is slightly lower than Europe. We have 13 and 15%. And that's it. These are the main features. Now, if we go to agricultural, this is going to be short and sweet, really, because we see that South America, Africa, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia have the highest water consumption based on agricultural use. And that is the most significant feature. Now in our essay, I'm going to talk about percentages and we'll talk about numbers and I'll show you that where it's relevant, but this is the main idea. These are the main points that you want to talk about and compare in your essay. Of course, we do have to talk about the overview 
And for the overview, remember, we're looking at significant, highest, and lowest. And basically what we see is that industrial use is the highest in North America and Europe. So I'm going to put IU highest in North America and Europe. And then we see agricultural use is highest in the other four regions. This is the most prominent general information included in the pie charts. And we do not have to include anything else in our overview because it's not as general of a trend as these two features right here. Okay, so this is the preparation work. Now I'm going to show you the color-coded essay and we'll read it together. Okay, and here we are. So we've got our color-coded essay. I'm going to start with the introduction that's been paraphrased. It says, the pie charts provide information regarding the proportions of water used for industrial, agricultural, and domestic use in six regions. Now I've said proportions of water rather than percentage of water, and we see industrial, agricultural, domestic. I've taken that right from the key here, even though it wasn't in our prompt. That's fine. And instead of saying six areas of the world, I've said six regions. Now looking at the overview paragraph, I've said in general, Water serves mostly an industrial purpose in North America and Europe, whereas it is predominantly used for agriculture in South America, Africa, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia. So note I'm being general, so I've said in general, and whereas, like we saw in our previous example, is a great connective. I've also said mostly and predominantly. I've included this in green. Mostly is because it's at 48%. Predominantly is something that is a main feature. Now looking at body paragraph one, it says regarding industrial and domestic use, North America and Europe consume an average of approximately 50% of water for industrial purposes. However, these two regions report much less water consumption for domestic purposes, utilizing 13% and 15% respectively. And respectively is a great term. I've put it here in green because we're talking about North American Europe. We don't have to repeat those words. So I know that 13% pertains to North America and 15 to Europe, just like we looked at here. Then I continue on and I say, out of all six regions, South America dedicates the highest percentage of water consumption for domestic use, but uses only 10% for industrial reasons. Both industrial and domestic use remain the least popular choices in Africa, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia, where their combined use makes up less than 20% of the overall water consumption in each of the three regions. And so I haven't gone too much in detail, but I just wanted to say that it is the least popular for these three areas. And I'm looking at the combined use. So basically I've looked at these two numbers, these two numbers and these two numbers for each of these areas and notice that they are less than 20%. Again, you want to use these benchmark round whole numbers when possible. Now you'll notice that agricultural use is shorter than our body paragraph one, but that makes sense and it's fine. We were talking about two points in body paragraph one, so obviously there was more to write. Agricultural will be a bit smaller. So I see agricultural use, on the other hand, accounts for 71% of water consumption in South America and over three-fourths of water use in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Central Asia, where it is nearly 90%. And I'm looking at Central Asia specifically. I want to make a note that it's nearly 90%. We're at 88% here. And then North America and Europe consume less than 40% of water for agricultural purposes. And that is exactly what we saw. So note that in my notes, I gave myself a guideline. And as I was writing, I looked and analyzed the pie charts for specific information like what we see here, less than 40% or makes up less than 20%. You don't have to write all of these specific percentages in your notes. You can just give yourself sort of a map and then elaborate as you are writing it. And then just to see here, we have some nice important functional words in red regarding, on the other hand, these are great ways to start your body paragraphs. 
And of course, however, is a contrasting word to highlight a contrasting idea. Pay close attention to these vocabulary and phrases in green. Accounts for is a great way to say makes up. I said over three-fourths instead of saying over 75%. Combined use. This is excellent when we have more than two pie charts because we're actually looking at the combined percentages, and this is a nice way to compare and contrast ideas. I also see out of all six regions. So when you want to pay attention to something in particular, you can say out of all six regions, or perhaps if you only had four, you could say out of all four. It really depends on how much you have. Great job today. This was a lot to take in. And like I said, more than two pie charts can really get confusing. So thanks for following along. Let's wrap up this lesson and just look at some do's and don'ts. First off, things you want to do, definitely analyze your charts before writing. A little bit more time will have to be devoted to analyzing the charts because you're going to have more than two. So make sure you are finding the main features so that you are able to compare the information and the features. Notice in the first example, I spent some more time with you writing out and looking at these features. In the second essay, I sort of just gave you a map and then we embellished on it when actually writing the essay. So don't feel like you have to write every feature in your notes. Really find a note-taking system that works for you. Then you want to, of course, implement proper grammar. We used a lot of passive. And then organize your essay using that foolproof method. Things you don't want to do, definitely don't start writing the essay immediately without even analyzing your charts. You do need to spend a couple of minutes on the analysis process. Of course, today I took my time with you. With time and practice, you'll be able to minimize the time it takes and be very efficient in your analysis. Do not write about each and every element in your pie chart. Now you do want to touch upon each pie chart in some way, but do not write an in-depth analysis on every single point in every single pie chart. And of course, you don't want to forget to look at the major trends and in information. That overview paragraph is very important. And of course, don't use incorrect grammar. Really study up on the difference between the passive and the active. And a great way to do that would be by visiting us at www.bestmytest.com slash IELTS. Here we've got a lot of great lessons about writing task one, but also for IELTS tips and tricks. So go ahead and visit us there. Once again, thanks so much for following along with me today. I hope this helped you with this specific question type, and I will see you for the next lesson.